Hey everybody, Dave here. Today we're going to look at the action copy rows from the object collections. This is what's going to be useful for us anytime we need to take a subset of rows from one collection and put them in another. Let's start by doing our first step, which is to call the action. Let's go drag an action stage onto the page, open it up, and rename to copy rows. Next, let's change the business object dropdown to collections in the internal business objects group. Then we'll change the action dropdown to copy rows. We've got our three tabs we'll have to deal with. In this case, we actually do have inputs. We have three of them. We have outputs and we'll be looking at the conditions first. So our second step here is to preview the pre and post conditions. As always, I want to mention that if you're confused by any of these, I should be able to answer your questions later on during the video as we work through this, but I want to preview these to show you that this is how you should do this when you're learning a new action. So let's look at the preconditions. The collection stage must exist. Okay, so we're copying rows from one collection to another. We could see that if I jump back over to the inputs, it's going to ask us for a collection as an input. It's also going to ask us for a collection as an output. So we can probably make a guess here that both those collections have to exist. Uh, and if, if we can't guess that, then through some testing, we figure it out. The second precondition is that the collection stage must be within the scope of the action stage. Again, I'm going to say that this applies to both our input and our output collections. And so those for us is just going to be on the same page to be within this, the scope of the action stage. Then our post condition is that the collection is unchanged, unchanged. So you can tell from this that these instructions were written from the perspective of the input collection. It really probably would be a little better if this actually described both collections that we're working with because the first collection is unchanged, but as we'll see, the output collection will be changed to mimic or look like the first collection. So we'll see that in a minute. Now we have talked about the preconditions and the post conditions. Let's set up our inputs and outputs. Let's move over to the inputs tab. And here again, this is just like if you watched the add row video, it's the same thing where uh, there's going to be sometimes that an action will ask you for an input collection. Sometimes it will want you to give it the name of the collection. And that's identified by the data type of text right here. And other times it's asking you to pass it the actual collection, meaning the data along with it. And that would be marked by this saying collection. The, in that case, this is in the inputs tab, if it said collection right here, then I would need to put square brackets around that collection. Let's go create our input collection and our output collection, and then we'll come back in here to put those into our inputs and outputs. So I'm, I've clicked out and I'm gonna go over to the left side and drag a collection stage on the page. We're going to call this collection in and we're going to add two fields. We're going to make them both text. You just leave it field one and field two. Uh, so uh, we'll move over to initial values and we'll create a couple of rows. Add row, add row. Doesn't matter what you type in here. So we'll just say row one row one and row two, row two. These are our initial values. So when we run the page, this is the values that will go into the collection to start off with. And then we can manipulate it from there. That's our collection in. Now I'm going to make this easy for us to understand, at least I hope so, by calling the output collection similarly collection out. In this case, to start off with, I'm not going to create any fields or put any of initial values. So let's just leave that here and we're going to come back to it. All right, we've created our input collection and our output collection. Let's go in and configure the action stage to use those. So our, in our input tab, as we talked about, the collection name is what it's asking for in text. So I'm going to go over and drag, this is what I always do. I drag the input collection name onto here and it gives me an error says, Hey, this is the wrong data type. And I say, yeah, I know it's cause I can't pass the actual collection in. So I'm going to change the square brackets to quotation marks. And now we won't have that error because now I'm passing it the name of the collection only. 
Let's move over to outputs because that'll kind of go along with this. Our output collection is going to be the collection out. And you'll see that whenever we're dealing with outputs like this, it's just how Blue Prism works. Um, if I drag collection out onto here, uh, first of all, I'm not going to have the same problem, but it, it simply doesn't work the same uh, because this is not an expression field. Whereas if you go back to inputs, you'll see that it has a little calculator symbol here. This is a this is actually an expression field, um, whereas the in the outputs, it's not going to be like that. So you don't have some of the same square brackets and quotation marks problems. Uh, this is looking for the collection, um, and what we're going to do is take from one collection and put into the other collection. There's one thing left for us to do, and that's to tell the action stage how many rows we want. The way that this action stage works, you can see is it asks us for the start row and the end row. If I mouse over these, you can see a little bit of documentation pop up, right? Uh, but it may be, maybe if it's, if it's too many words on the screen or it's disappearing like we just saw happen, I can go over and click on the I button to view the documentation, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm going to bring this up on the screen. I'm scrolling down to copy rows. And this is documentation that's auto-generated in Blue Prism. If you were to create your own object, type into the description field and the preconditions field, stuff like that, create fields, that would get auto-generated into documentation like this. Now, uh, we see our, our preconditions and our these are our post conditions. And here it's called endpoint. Uh, but what we want to look at is start row and end row for the input parameters. So this says that we're looking for a number. Okay, that makes sense. It's the index of the first row to copy. And this, we'll read the second part in a second. Uh, the end row is going to be a number. And it's the index of the last row to copy. All right, so if I want to copy a range of rows, I need to tell it the number of the first one and a number of the last one that I want to copy. The, the second, the, the last part to each of these says the index is from zero to n minus one, where n is the total number of rows in the collection. All right, so if that confuses you, don't worry about it. It's actually pretty simple. And that is that, uh, let's say we have a collection. I'm going to close out and go into our in our input collection here. Look at an initial values. Okay, so uh, row number one right here is actually index zero, like it said. And then row number two is actually index number one. So if we got all the way up to having 100 rows, the last row is not actually row number 100. It's row number 99, n minus one. If that's confusing for you, all it takes is for you just to try it out. Try to copy some rows, see if it copied right. And if it didn't, it may be because you got the index numbers wrong. So what we're going to do is copy uh, just one of these rows to begin with. I'm going to go into copy rows and show you that what I want to do is just copy the very first row in, in the collection on the left into the collection on the right. I'm going to type zero in the start row. And I only want to copy one row. So I'm also going to type zero for the end row. Click OK. Now I'm going to do my next step, which is to verify the preconditions and the post conditions really quick. I'm going to open this back up and go over to the conditions tab. Collection stage must exist. Obviously, we created it on the same page. That means that our second precondition is met as well. It's within the scope of the action stage. And then uh, our post conditions we'll see after we run it. I'm going to hit F3, connect start to the action stage, and then action stage to the end stage. Hitting F2 again to go back to my pointer. Now, when I re, I'm gonna, I always reset. Okay, and then uh, when I click go, what you're gonna see is that uh, we still have our first collection. It's unchanged. It has two rows in it, but our new collection, our output collection, has one row, and you'll see it has the same fields, field one and field two, but it has the data from the first row. Let's go in and just really quick. We'll change the number to one for both of these. Start at index one, which should be row two, and end row, the last one we want to copy, is going to be the second row, or index one. Let's click OK. I'm going to reset and run it again. OK, so we got run one row again. Let's go look at what the current values are, though. We got the second row. Now let's say that I want to copy all of the rows. Well, obviously, I can do that manually by going in to the stage. I'm going to change the start row to zero. 
and I'm going to leave the end row as one because I know there are two rows. And so this covers the range of the rows, index zero to index one. Make sure I've got my other inputs right. Click OK, reset, and run it. All right, so now what you'll see is that if you were to compare these two collections on the inside, that they are exactly the 